Hey guys, how's it going? Recently I posted a couple of pictures of some fermented foods that I made on Instagram and some of you guys were interested in knowing how I made it. So I'm going to be sharing in this video some tips on how to make it really easy and delicious for you. Uh, I really enjoy fermenting my own foods and because I get to not only you know, make it with any kind of combinations that I like but also can adjust the level of saltiness in there. I love eating it as a side dish or any kind of things with my meals. I also give it to my dog, Lotus. She loves it. And hey, healthy gut equals healthy immune system. I can't see why we don't give this a try. So we're gonna get started. Before starting the DIY, I wanna first show you guys some of the vegetables that you can use or in a combination somehow. Things like cucumbers really creates a nice natural pickles, even sweet peppers, bell peppers, hot peppers if you like a nice kick to it. I love using rainbow carrots, cauliflowers, or things from the cruciferous family really seems to speed up the fermentation. And I just enjoy using firm vegetables because they, they don't get too soft after fermenting. And next, we're gonna move on to jars. You can either save your glass jars, make sure they are glass. And I love using this one the most, which is like a screw-on kind of a lid. Uh, yeah, so if you're, you're reusing jars, be sure to sanitize it really well. Here's another one I saved from like an old uh, yogurt jar. And I just, I enjoy using these. Or you can also purchase some new ones. This is a, a pickling or fermenting jar you can get out online or at a department store. Since I don't have any empty ones, I'm just going to show you this one that I have some fermented foods in. Now let's grab a few flat rocks and this is completely optional. I'll explain more about this in a bit. I like to start off by getting the sea salt dissolved in water since I use the more coarse ones. So I like to use about one and a half teaspoon per cup of water. Uh, this is completely up to you. It's your preference. However, how salty you like it, it's all according to your own taste. So I'm just gonna stir it, set it aside, and I'm starting with, of course, a nice sanitized jar and I'm going to be using some Napa cabbage that are already roughly chopped up and I'm just packing it in. I'm packing as much as I can in this jar. Did you know that fermented foods is not only delicious, but there's probiotics in there that helps to keep your gut healthy. There's vitamin K2, which helps to promote, you know, uh, brain health, good skin strong bones, preventing heart disease and cancers, and even lowering risk for blood clots. So if you're new at this, I highly suggest that you start just by using one to two ingredients. Just keep it simple until you master it, then you can do any combinations you like. Here I have garlic and Napa cabbage. I think they both pair really well together. I mean, think of kimchi, right? So maybe you can try like a cabbage and garlic or something. Just keep it simple. Now that you've filled it up almost to the top, you want to leave about one or one and a half inch of space from the top. This would allow the fermentation to happen and not cause the vegetables and the liquid to rise too much that it would overflow. So yeah, I'm just going to keep packing it down, pressing it, you know, as much as I can. Now that the jar is filled, I want to keep the veggies underwater. And to do that, there's a couple different ways. First would be to place the stones on top to weigh the veggies down. Or the second method, which I like to use for shredded cabbage, here is the finished products for this fermented cabbage, sauerkraut, I guess you call it. Um, so first you would set aside a large cabbage leaf and then after you fill the jar up, you would fold this large leaf and stuff it back on top to, to prevent the smaller pieces from floating above water. And because I just messed with this jar to show you, that's why you're seeing all these little pieces floating now. Okay, here are some ripe bitter melons that I grew. I'm going to try fermenting these to see how they taste. So I'm just going to give this uh, sea salt water a stir again just one more time in case any has not dissolved. And I'm just going to fill up 
these jars and the key to this is that you make sure all the vegetables are going to be completely submerged under water that would prevent mold from growing okay safety tip when you put the lid on don't screw it on too tightly the next few days you're gonna see carbonation build up inside and if your jar gets too full it's gonna cause the water to overflow now you want to find a spot maybe in the kitchen or on a table countertop for the next five to seven days for the fermentation process to happen. I like keeping mine in a cooler because it stays, the temperature stays steady in there throughout the day. Here I got some uh, made the other day and I just keep all of mine in the cooler, but you can put it on the kitchen countertop as well. So yeah, you're probably not gonna notice much difference the first couple of days, but you should check on it daily anyway. When you notice tiny little bit of bubbles forming in there, also the lid's going to be a bit tighter than how you left it last. And that's when you know to loosen it, loosen the lid just a tiny bit. And you wanna do that each day when you check on it if you notice it getting tighter, the lid getting tighter. Here I'm showing you about the fourth day of the fermentation and you can see there's so much sizzling going on. If you want to find out more about uh, fermented foods, be sure to check out my blog, which I will link you on the bottom of this video. Now if you want to check if your veggies are ready, this is what you got to do. Oh my god, it's pouring over. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was just talking about earlier, not to fill your jar up too high. Oh my god, it's so spicy. The Anaheim chili. Oh. I love the way chili smells, guys, but I can't handle the spiciness. That's why I pick a really mild one. So yeah, that's pretty much how you're gonna try it and find out if your food is ready to eat or not is really just how you like it. How fermented do you like it? How crunchy or soft do you like your vegetables to be? So for me, I'm gonna let it sit just a couple more days and then I will put it in the refrigerator. It's still crunchy right now. It's salty and a little, it's not sour enough. So just push it down, close it. Now it's gonna go in the cooler for a couple more days. Now let's check back in with the bitter gourds. It's been a little over seven days and the carbonation has already settled. So, so good. Just a burst of flavor in my mouth. Let's give that bitter gourd a try. It's my first time pickling it. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. I can still taste that sizzly flavor from like fermenting it. Oh, it's so good. It tastes like the, the well, there's like a cooked version to bitter gourd that we make that's like savory and um, maybe spicy if you wanted, but definitely like savory um, and sour. So instead, this is like the raw version. So I like to switch things up so I can get nutrients from like, you know, the best of both worlds. You really got to start fermenting your food if you haven't. It is so easy and delicious and good for you. If you follow through the tips that I just shared with you, it is not going to be scary at all because it took me a while to actually you know, understand, you know, the basics and the importance of like, you know, how to ferment your food correctly. So I hope you guys do give this a try at home and let me know down below what your experiences are and uh, what do you like to ferment? Um, yeah. And if you have questions, be sure to leave in the comments down below and like and share the video if you enjoyed it. And please, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel for more videos and I shall see you right back here in the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.